Okay, as promised in an earlier video, I'm going to talk today about uh, the TCP or Transmission Control Protocol. And I realized in the previous uh, video I made my classic mistake of calling this the Transport Control Protocol, which is incorrect. And I've made sure to go back and, and change my notes. This is a, a mistake I, I've made consistently every time I teach this, and uh, I'm embarrassed every time. Uh, but it is the Transmission Control Protocol, aka TCP, which we will talk a lot about in this course. All right, so let's consider an example before we, we dig into the details of TCP. Say you have two people making telephone calls. I'll try to draw a little telephone there and make it wireless. Two people talking on the phone. Think about the sequence of actions that occurs to get these two people talking to each other. And we'll say that uh, this end is the, the caller. And we'll say for this is the, uh, the callee. So the sequence of actions that, that happen simply to get these two people talking to each other. The caller first dials. The second thing that happens, assuming the callee wants to pick up, is they answer the phone. And, you know, they may even say something like, hello. At this point, step three, we can talk back and forth. Oops, there we go. Now, you've done this a million times. This this sounds like well, duh, but this, it's a very specific sequence of events that must happen. We have to dial. The recipient has to answer. Once that connection. has been established, then we can freely talk back and forth. The key word here is connection. We have to have some sense of, I know that the person on the other end is actually there and is receiving uh, the words I say across the telephone. And similarly, they, they in turn have to know that I exist and am receiving the, the words that they're, they're speaking. And, once that connection is established, we have a, a reasonably good sense that that's occurring, uh, especially if we're hearing the words each other is, is speaking. This is really, um, you know, by way, of, by, by way of analogy, this is what TCP does. So let's, let's look at this in terms of two computers. Let's say we have the internet, which if you remember from uh, our previous video, there can be a lot of machines in the internet um, that are passing messages back and forth to each other for, you know, two other machines to be able to, to speak. So, machine A and machine B are not necessarily physically connected to each other, but there may be other machines on the interior of the network that are forwarding messages so that what goes from point A goes to point B. TCP, one of its, one of its many um, features, is that it, it, it establishes a reliable connection between A and B. And by reliable, we mean that if A sends a packet whose, whose intended destination is B, we have a, a pretty reasonable assurance that that packet is going to get there. Now again, this may sound like a well duh moment, but the kicker here is that the lower level layers in our TCP IP stack don't make this guarantee. It's only if we set up a connection at the TCP layer do we get this. So 
an established TCP connection says that if A sends a packet to B, or vice versa, P can, B sends a packet to A, we have, we have it on pretty good authority that packet is going to get there. There are some catastrophic situations where the packets don't get through. Um, but, you know, it, it, by and large, once that connection is established, um, we have reliable communication and um, we know that our packets are, are making it all the way across the internet. So let's look at some things that could um, that could keep this from happening. So here's A, here's B, and there are machines in the middle. As we're, as we're going from one place to another. Um, there are several things that could happen. So as, as A is sending packets along the uh, along a path here. Let me draw a path. Let's say that our preferred path is something like this. Let's do that. And I'm gonna label our interiors C D E F G H. And this is packet one, packet two, packet three, and packet four. Now ideally, we want B, if, if A sends the packets in the orders one, two, three, four, we want B to receive those packets in the order that they were sent, one, two, three, four. But several things could happen in, 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 in the middle. One is that, say at F, we receive one, two, and three, but then F is so bogged down with getting packets from other places that it gets four but has to throw it out. It doesn't have any memory to hold that, that packet. So in this case, B gets one packets one, two, and three, but never receives four. This is what we call a dropped packet. TCP is going to guarantee that that packet eventually does, does go back to B. And it does that simply by resending packet four. So all of these have been, have been forwarded on, packet four goes through the system, F can now process it, and then eventually B receives its, pack, its, its fourth packet. All right, uh, another situation that could occur. Do some erasing here. Um, in this case, we send out packets one, two, three, four. Maybe somewhere in the interior, the packets get out of order and we receive one, three, four, two in that order. Well, B doesn't want out of order packets. It needs them in order because it, has to, it may have to reassemble them into a larger message. Um, TCP provides a way to reorder those packets. And it actually happens uh, again with the retransmission uh, mechanism, which we'll see, see later. Finally, another issue that could occur is that we may receive duplicates of some packets. So we send out packets one, two, three, four. We might receive one, two, two, three, four, three. So in this case, packet two was received twice, packet three was received twice. Now, at, at the simplest way of understanding this, if we receive doubles or triples or quadruples or a hundred of, of the same packet, we simply throw out the the uh, the bad the the duplicated packets. Um, in actuality, again, the retransmission. Um, aspect of, of TCP is going to fix this for us. But those are the, those are the, four, the three situations that, uh, that TCP commonly handles. It wants to guarantee that all the packets sent eventually arrive at the destination. And there are these three situations where that can be fouled up in some way. One is where we just simply drop packets. They're lost somewhere in the interior. The other is a case where the packets arrive out of order. Well, 
the, the recipient doesn't understand that they're out of order um, and, and has to, to reorder them or, in this case, ask for them again uh, so that they arrive in the proper order. Uh, the other situation is if we receive duplicate packets, and if that happens, we simply throw out the duplicates. So let's talk about how it does this. So I'm going to set up a timeline of communication between two machines. One is the sender, one is the recipient. And each one of them is going to have a timeline. So time increases as we go down the page. And, we, and packets are sent by moving from one swim lane to the other. So let's say our sender sends to our recipients packets with the sequence number and this is part of, part of the TCP header 200 201 202, 203, and sequence numbers increase uh, by one for every packet that, that is sent. Um, and as I said before, this is part of the TCP header which controls uh, packets sent at the, at the TCP level. Now, receiving each one in order like this, is what is normally expected by the recipient. Let's look at the situation where a packet may have been dropped. So let's say we received 200, 201, 202, 203, and the next thing we receive is 206. This means that packets with sequence numbers 204 and 205 were not received. The recipient sees that there is a gap, and it says, ah, I'm going to assume I have a problem here. And so it sends an acknowledge, uh, a, a special packet called an acknowledgement, or ACK for short, back to the sender. And along with that acknowledgement, it sends a sequence number of what it thinks the next packet it should have received is. In this case, it's 204. So it acknowledges with the next expected packet. The sender sees, oh, I probably intended to send out 204 and 205, so I'm going to assume the recipient never got them. So the sender actually resends packet 204, packet 205, and packet 206. Because what, what actually happened somewhere in here is that 204 and 205 got lost somewhere. They were dropped somewhere in the, uh, in the network. So using this, this acknowledgement and retransmission, we were able to recover from the, the drop packet scenario. Let's see how this affects out of order. So once again, we have a sender, we have a receiver, sender sends packets 100, 101, 103, 104, and 102. From the receiver's end, this is really no different than the dropped packet situation. We have things in order up until where we expect 102 to happen. And yet, instead of getting what we expected, we still get, we got the next thing, in this case 103, 104, and eventually we got 102 here in the end.
Well, from the receiver's standpoint, it missed the next thing that it, that it expected. So it's actually going to throw out all of these and requ request a retransmission of 102 and everything that follows. So at that point, the sender will resend 102, 103, and 104. This also shows the third case where, uh, uh, the third fault case where we actually receive duplicate packets. In this case, the receiver has, even though it requested retransmission, actually received duplicate packets of 103 and 104 in which case it throws out uh, the, the ones it doesn't need. So we've, we've shown how retransmission, which is a, a benefit of TCP, can ensure that all packets get from the sender to the receiver. Um, there are a few, a few other nice things about TCP. One is that it, it performs some integrity checks on, on packets so that if a packet is received um, and it is corrupted, maybe a bit got flipped somewhere in the middle, um, we can check that and we can treat it simply as a drop packet and again retransmit it. Um, but this is the, the, the major feature of TCP um, for, that ensures reliable communication. Um, except in very disastrous situations, uh, a packet sent from a, from a sender to a receiver uh, in the, under the TCP model will always get there. Uh, let's look, look at a, a couple more features of TCP. One is the idea or the concept of ports. So we have two machines that are communicating each other with each other through the network or the internet, however you want to want to describe it. Machine A, machine B. And let's say machine B is a server of some sort and that it has several server applications running on it, including a web server, chat server, um, maybe a secure shell server, uh, and say an FTP server. Let's make A our client. A has several client applications, like say Firefox, which connects to the web, um, IRC, which is a chat client, um, uh, a secure shell client, and an FTP client. So these are applications that can talk to their respective server applications uh, on the remote machine. We need a way to distinguish traffic flowing over the network so that um, a connection made from Firefox goes to the web server on this, on this machine, uh, a connection made from IRC goes to the chat server on the remote machine, a connection made by SSH goes to the appropriate place, and a connection made by FTP goes to the appropriate place. The way this works is with ports. You can think of a port as a mail slot at the destination. So if, if you were to send me a piece of mail here at, at University of West Georgia, you would send it to the computer science department with my name on it. Well, the, the local campus post office will simply deliver it to um, our secretary in the department. And she will then go and look at, look at the actual recipient, in this case, Lewis Baumstart, and put it in my mail slot. Well, you can think of that as a port. Um, the lower levels of the TCP IP stack can't distinguish between all these different uh, server applications and client applications. They just send data from one place to another. TCP ports tell us how we deliver that data once it gets to our recipient. So, for example, um, in your typical web scenario, let me change color here to web traffic usually goes to port 80 at the web server. Um, that's just kind of a the standard port that, that, that web traffic has been, been assigned to. Um, secure shell traffic, if I remember correctly, generally goes to port 22. Um, FTP traffic, 
I'm blanking right now, but it has its own um, it, it has its own port. I know that uh, a mail server is generally port 25. Uh, chat is often, if it's for IRC, is often port 6667. Um, most well-known applications tend to have a port that is, is, is assigned to them and is usually associated with them. Uh, you can change them, but it's usually good to stay, to stay standard. So when Firefox makes a connection to the web, it's going to send its, its request data to port 80. If your IRC client makes, may, wants to talk with a server, it's generally going to send its request to port 6667. A, a secure shell client is going to send its request to port 22 and so forth. Um, these are ways for, again, for a client application and a server application um, to distinguish each other on, on each machine. Um, and then again, it's like, it's like once the packet arrives at a machine, how do we know which program do we deliver that packet to? And the ports are how we distinguish between those. Uh, let's see, anything else we want to talk about with uh, TCP? I believe that covers it for now. Uh, there's, there's a good bit more in the reading. Um, so go go check that, and um, you know, again, let me know if you have any questions that you uh, th th that you need to clarify things on. All right, thanks.